Welcome. Today we're going to be taking a look at A Game of Thrones The Board Game. This is a 3-6 player area movement area majority fantasy game where you take the role of one of the great houses seeking dominance over Westeros. You will be mustering armies, moving armies, conquering territories, and fighting wildlings, trying to gain dominance, claim the Iron Throne, and win the game. How do you win the game? By controlling the most castles and strongholds at the end of 10 rounds. Or being the first player to control seven strongholds or castles. Now that we know what the winning condition is, let's take a look at the components, setup, and how gameplay works in A Game of Thrones, the board game. Now let's take a look at the components. You have the main game board. The bottom left, you have the round track. Below the round track, you have the victory point track. Next to those, you have the supply track. Your position on the supply track will let you know how many armies over one you can have and the size of those armies. And then next to the supply track, you have your influence tracks. The Iron Throne track determines the turn order, and the first player on that track would get the Iron Throne. The Fiefdom track resolves any combat ties, and the first player on that track would get the Steel Blade. And the King's Court track allow you to gain special orders, and the first player on that track would get the Raven. Then above your map, you have your Wildling. There is a Wildling track and a place for the Wildling deck. And in the middle of the board, you have your map. There are three types of areas where you can place units on the map. Land locations, which are outlined in white. Sea locations, which are outlined in red. And port locations, which have an anchor symbol. Port locations are under the ownership of the land that it is next to. But each port location still require an order. On the map, there are rivers. Rivers break up areas. Armies cannot cross rivers and must go around them unless there is a bridge. There are icons in each of the land areas on the map. You can have a castle or stronghold. These gain you victory points. The barrel icons contribute to your supply. Crown icons will contribute to getting you power tokens. And then the shields let you know home territories. The King's Court overlay. This is used in three or four player games. The game round marker. Westeros cards. Three of these cards are revealed at the beginning of each round after the first round. The number on the back of the card and in the middle right of the card will let you know which stack this card is located. The wildling icon in the top right would advance the wildling track. And then at the bottom of the card is a description of the event and how it is to be resolved. Wildlings threat token. This tracks the wildlings strength and if they are going to attack. When this marker reaches 12, wildlings attack. Wildling card. When wildlings attack, you would resolve a card trying to beat the wildlings using your power tokens. In the middle of the card is the title of the attack, and then at the top is if the wildlings win, how to resolve the card, and at the bottom is the resolution for if the players or the night watch win. Neutral force tokens, these will go on independent areas. The area where the tile will be located is at the top. The bottom left lets you know the side of the tile for the number of players. And the bottom right is their defense strength. The Iron Throne token would go to the player who is the highest on the Iron Throne track. The player that has this tile would break any ties except for combat. The Steel Blade. The Steel Blade goes to the player that is first on the Fiefdom track. The player that has the Steel Blade once per round gains a plus one in combat. The Raven. The Raven goes to the player who is first on the King's Court track, and they are allowed to take one of two actions. Either replace an order token after all of the order tokens have been revealed, or look at the top card of the Wildling deck. Tides of Battle cards. This is a module that can be added after a few plays. In each of the houses or colors, you have a player screen. This is a reference and allows you to hide order tokens, and in bidding can allow you to hide power tokens. Victory point marker. This allows you to track the number of castles and strongholds that you occupy on the victory point track. Supply marker. This is used to mark your location on the supply track. Influence markers. These are used to mark your location on each of the three influence tracks. Garrison marker. This is used to mark your defense on your home territory. Order tokens. These are used to mark the orders of each of your armies on the main board. Power tokens. These are used to bid on influence and to defend from wildlings. Then we have your units, footmen. These cost one, add one in combat, and count one toward your supply number. 
in a location, knights. These cost two, give plus two in combat, and cost one toward your supply number in a location. Ships, these cost one and give plus one in combat and can be placed on sea and port locations and count one to your supply number in a location. Siege engines, these cost two and are plus four when attacking only and they count one to your supply number in a location. House cards, these are cards that will be played during combat. Their strength number is located in the top left. Their name is located across the top and their effect is at the bottom. Reference cards, and then finally, your rule book. Now let's take a look at the setup. We're going to be setting this up for a three player game, which takes 11 steps. Step one, place the main board. You're going to place the main board in the middle of the play area. Then, if you're playing a three or four player game, you'll place the King's Court overlay on the King's Court track. Step two, Shuffle in place Wildling Deck and Threat Token. Shuffle the Wildling Deck and place it face down on its indicated space on the main game board. Then place the Wildling Threat Token on two on the Wildling track. Step three, separate Shuffle in place Westeroos Deck. Separate the Westeroos cards based on the back of the cards, one, two, or three. Shuffle each deck and place them face down next to the main board. Step four, place neutral force tokens. Using the neutral force tokens with the correct number of players in the bottom left, place them on the matching locations. Step five, place the round marker. Place the game round marker on one on the round track. Step six, select the house or color. Each player will select a house or color. When playing with less than six players, you will have to reference the rule book because certain houses cannot be chosen. Step seven, Get player components. Each player gets a player screen, house cards, order tokens, supply marker, influence markers, victory point marker, garrison token, footmen, knights, ships, and seas engines. Step eight, place influence, victory, and supply markers. Players will place their markers on the indicated locations depicted on their player screens. You can share positions on victory and supply tracks. With less than six players, you will take the influence tokens and slide them to the left to fill in any gaps. Step nine, place units. Players will place units on the main board as depicted on their player screen. Step 10, place garrison tokens. Each player places their garrison token on their home region. Step 11, place power token pool and gain power tokens and dominance tokens. Place the power tokens for each player in a pool next to the main board within reach of all the players. Then each player will take five power tokens of their house color. Then the first player in each of the influence tracks will gain the dominance token for that track. Now let's take a look at the gameplay. The game consists of 10 rounds, or if a player controls seven areas with a castle or stronghold, they win immediately. A round. A round consists of three phases. Westeroos phase, the planning phase, and the action phase. Now let's look at each phase in detail. Phase one, the Westeroos phase. You'll skip this in round one. The Westeroos phase takes four steps. Step one, advance the game round marker. Step two, draw Westeroos cards. You will draw, reveal, and resolve the top card from each of the three decks. Step three, advance the wildling threat. Advance the wildling threat token. The number of revealed wildling icons on your Westeroos cards. If it reaches 12 on the track, the wildlings attack and a wildling card is drawn and resolved. And then step four, resolve Westeroos cards. In ascending order, each Westeroos card is resolved. A description of each is found in the rule book and on the reference sheet. If the wildlings attack, you would resolve the wildling attack in six steps. Step one, you would determine the strength by checking the track number. Step two, you would blind bid power tokens to fight off the wildlings. Step three, you would reveal and calculate the night watch strength, which is the number of power tokens that the combined players bid. Step four, you would determine the outcome. The night watch strength has to be greater than or equal to the wildling strength. Then you would reveal the card and resolve the effect. For the wildling victory, you would resolve the top of the card. And for the night watch victory, you would resolve the bottom of the card. These give effects based on your bid. Step five, you would adjust the wildling threat track. If the wildlings won, you would not adjust the track at all, and you would go down two on the threat track if they lost. And then step six, you would discard your power tokens. Then we move to phase two, the planning phase. Each player will secretly issue orders in three steps. 
Step 1. Assign orders. Players will simultaneously place a face down order token in each of the regions where they contain at least one unit. If you do not have enough order tokens, you would place your order tokens in turn order or the Iron Throne track order and leave a number of regions open. There are five types of orders. Raid. This is an act of aggression used in the first step of the action phase. This would remove an adjacent enemy support, consolidate power, or raid order. March. This is a move. You use it in step two of the action phase. Also on these orders, you have plus or minus a number in combat strength. Defense. This is a defensive order, and you have a plus or minus number of a defense combat modifier. Support. This gives support to an adjacent area if they are involved in combat. Consolidate power. You would gain a number of power tokens with this order. You would gain one power token plus one for each power icon in that area. Based on the king's order track, you can also place a number of special orders. These are the ones with the star symbols. A description of each of these special orders is located in the rulebook and on the reference sheet. After all the players assign their orders, we move to step two. Reveal orders. Players will simultaneously flip over all of their order tiles. And then step three, use the Raven Dominance token. The player highest on the King's Court track and has the Raven Dominance token can choose to either replace an order token that they have placed in step one or look at the top wild link card. Once they use this power, they would flip their Dominance token over and then they would flip it back over at the end of the action phase. Then we move to phase three, the action phase. This is where we resolve our orders in four steps. Step one, resolve the raid orders. In turn order, or Iron Throne order, players will resolve one raid order. To resolve, you would choose an enemy, support, raid, or consolidate power token next to the area where your raid token was located. And then you would discard both that token and your raid token. If you raid a consolidate power token, you would gain one power token, and the player that you raided would lose one power token. Keep in mind that you cannot raid a sea area from a land area, but you can raid a land area from a sea area. Step two, resolve march orders. In turn order or iron throne order, each player resolves a march order. When you move, you can move some or all separately or together to adjacent areas. Footmen, knights, and siege engines are land armies, and ships are sea or port armies. If you choose to move all of your armies out of a region, you can choose to place a power token to keep control of that region. But if that region was invaded by an enemy player, then that power token would be discarded and they would not have to do combat to take control of the region. Land units can move via ships to areas adjacent to their sea locations. When moving, neutral force tokens can be destroyed through combat. You do not have to take the combat steps. The player just has to have greater than or equal to the defense value of the neutral force token. This can be done through the combat strength of your units, the march orders, and any support. When units move into an area of another house's units, combat would occur. In combat, the strength of your units are as follows. The footmen are one, knights are two, ships are one, and siege engines are four when they are attacking or supporting an attack. Combat is carried out in six steps. Step one, call for support. A support order can give support to an attack or defender. Support can be for multiple combats in a round. Step two, calculate combat strength. You will add your units, bonuses, support, and any garrison token. Step three, choose a house card and reveal. The attacker and defender will choose a house card to play. When choosing a house card, the combat value is the top left and the effect is at the bottom. For a sword icon on a house card, if you win, an enemy unit is destroyed. For a fort icon on the house card, if you are defeated, will allow you to ignore a sword card. Step four, use the steel blade. You would add plus one to the combat strength and then flip the steel blade over. Step five, calculate your final strength. Calculate your combat strength, the house card, and the steel blade. And then step six, combat resolution. Determine who is victorious. You would destroy one defeated unit for each unblocked sword. And then the player that lost the combat would retreat to an adjacent free area or a friendly area. You would turn the retreated units on their side because they cannot fight again 
this round. Then you would remove the defender order if they were defeated and discard your house cards. And then step three of the action phase, resolve, consolidate power orders. In turn order or iron throne order, you will gain one power token plus one more power token for each power symbol in that area. And then you would remove the order. And then step four, clean up. Remove all orders from the board, flip the raven and sword back over. And then we would start the next round with phase one, the Westeros phase. You would advance the round marker, draw the Westeros cards, one from each of the decks, advance the wildling threat if there are any wildling icons indicated, and then resolve the Westeros cards. For mustering cards, you would gain units for strongholds and castles. A stronghold would give two points and castles one. Then you would spend them on army units. A footman and ship cost one, and then the knights and siege cost two. You can also upgrade using those points to go from footman to knight or from footman to siege. A Clash of Kings card would allow you to bid on the influence tracks. So starting with the Iron Throne track, you would choose a number of power tokens to bid, placing them behind your screen, and then you would reveal and then adjust your position on the track. And then you would repeat this process for the other two influence tracks keeping in mind that all ties are resolved by the Iron Throne. Then you would discard the power tokens that you used to bid. A supply card would require an update to the supply track. You would count the number of supply icons on the areas that you control, and then adjust the supply track, and then you would adjust the number of armies and size of the armies in your areas. Keep in mind that a size one does not count toward an army. Then rounds would continue until someone has control of seven castles or strongholds or at the end of the 10th round. And then the player with the most victory points or controls the most castles and strongholds is the most dominant, claims the Iron Throne, and wins a Game of Thrones the board game.